Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to start talking about sampling distributions, which is going to lead us into the central limit theorem. This is going to be the first of, of a few videos on this very, very important topic. So in this video, we're going to introduce the idea of sampling distributions, and we're going to do this by a dice experiment. Okay, so we're going to take this experiment. Suppose we perform the experiment of taking a sample of size n from a known population and compute a statistic for the sample, such as its mean, median, or maybe standard deviation. If we repeat the experiment, do we expect the same results every time? Do we expect them to be exactly the same as the population results? Okay, the population parameters. If we form a distribution where the random variable is the value of these sample statistics from this distribution, then what does the distribution of sample statistics look like? Does it look like the distribution of individual data points from the underlying distribution? What's the same and what's different? How does the mean and standard deviation of the distribution of sample statistics compare to the underlying distribution of individuals? So these are going to be some of our, our uh, guiding questions that we're going to be working through and thinking about as we work through these problems. So let's start with, a, with an example before we try to answer those questions and see if we can get this to work out. So we know that if we roll a single die, a fair die, it either comes up a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 with equal probability. And so if you did that a whole bunch of times, we would expect uh, to get a, a discrete uniform distribution. If we did a frequency histogram or a relative frequency histogram, we would expect all the bars to be uh, at least approximately the same height. Okay. But what happens if we do this? Let's suppose we roll a set of five dice. On each row, here's what we're going to do. We'll put the dice in increasing order, place them on one line of a table like this, and then fill out, figure out the median, maxim, uh, median, the, the, uh, the sum, and the mean. So we're going to find the median and the mean for that row. For example, if you roll a 5, 3, 1, 6, and a 1, then you'd put it in as 1, 1, 3, 5, 6 in this table. Now, by putting them in order and the fact that there are five of them, the one in the middle, the three, is automatically in the median, so there's no extra computation there. To find the mean, we have to add them up and divide by five, which, uh, which should always work out to be uh, a whole number or something to one decimal place. Now, that's we're going to call that one experiment. And what I'd like you to do is try to do this yourself. Actually get five dice and work this out at least 20 times. You can do it more if you want. And extend this table so you have at least 20 rolls of data filled out. And if you want, you could use a spreadsheet like Excel or something like that to, to work this out. Okay. Then what I want you to do is go, after you have the 20 rows of data, use it to complete the following. You're going to complete a frequency and relative frequency table and a relative frequency histogram for three things. For the individual rows. So if you do it 20 times, five rolls each, five dice each, that's actually a sample size of 100 individual dice rolls. So thinking of them as an individual dice rolls, you put the frequency and relative frequency, the total here should be 100, 100, and of course over here the total should be 1. Then if you've done it 20 times, you'll have 20 medians. Do the same thing for medians, and you'll have uh, a frequency and a relative frequency for medians. The total there, if you do it 20 times, would be uh, 20 for frequency. And the same thing for means, you have 20 means. Now, before you begin to gather your data, make a prediction. What do you expect to see in heights of the bars in each of those histograms? Will the bars be a bar, should the bars be approximately the same height or not? Are the distribution of medians and means the same as the distribution of the individual dice rows? Okay. So I'd like you to actually try this experiment yourself if you can. So uh, if, you, if you can find some dice and sit down and do this, I think it would be useful to do. Um, okay, And if, if, if you may just stop this video and come back to it when you've done that. Uh, okay, So press pause and do that now. Okay, so hopefully you did this experiment yourself. But if not, at least I've had several students do this before. Okay. And I have an Excel spreadsheet where I've collected the data. Let me show you some of the ex part of the Excel spreadsheet. So here's the, the uh, 
the thing that I usually give them in class and had them work this out where they can record their data here, the 20 rolls of five dice. I hand them each group five dice. They work out the sum, the mean uh, there. Uh, in this case, I also had them think of the first two rolls as a, as a group of 10 and do the means there. So they have uh, uh, 100 individual dice rolls, 20 groups of five, and 10 groups and uh, yeah, in 10 groups of 10. And over here, they kept the frequency and relative frequency histograms for the individual dice rolls and then the, uh, the frequency of the means here. <coughs> Actually, the relative, I'd rather do relative frequency here and graph it. Okay, and then the same thing for the medians down here. And here's a table where they could do it by, by tenths. Okay, so what did they what did they turn out to give me? So here's here's some data that I have collected, uh, and I think I may have, uh, yeah. So here I have some some data collected. So of individual dice rolls, I have six thousand one hundred five on this spreadsheet at this point. I've got a little bit less data than this actually in the uh, in the slides coming up, uh, but here are the individual dice rolls. So for for group one, they had 21s, 18 sixes, uh, nine sevens, 21 eights, 20 fives, and 10 sixes, and so forth. And they work this work this out. This may be too small for you to see all the numbers. Let me kind of zoom in a little bit. And this turns out to be the relative frequencies here, or the frequencies and relative frequencies. And notice these all turn out to be about, about, about 16, 17, 18 percent. If you do the bar graph, which I have over here, this is what the bar graphs look like for each individual group. Notice there's some variation from group to group. So you don't expect each group to come up with the same uh, same uh, results every time and with a small group like 20 you're going to see quite a bit of variation in the possibilities there but when we put it all together in a really large group we get pretty much what we expected to see we we see that the um, these are all about the same height for the bars and that's exactly what we would uh, what we would expect here the expected version for uh, Come back to that. The expected version for uh, two dice, for one die, should be that all the bars are the same. That's the theoretical probability, and we got pretty close to that. So here's uh, here's where I did. Uh, I guess this was this data was collected a little bit before uh, I added to it in the spreadsheet there. But here's the data. Pretty similar results here for um, for 3,500 rolls. Now, again, what we should expect to see is actually a probability of one-sixth each time, exactly one-sixth, or approximately 17% each time, and note, well, 16.6 .6 repeating percent each time, and uh, that's approximately what we got. And so if we look at the next slide, here's a, uh, the, the 3,500 rolls. Uh, we got experimental data pretty close to the actual thing. So that's a good example of the law of large numbers. Okay, now let's look at the spreadsheet, and then we'll come back to, to this uh, here. So my next slide, I have medians for 700 rolls, and here's what the results came out to be. So notice, I don't know if that was a surprise to you or not, but the, the bars aren't the same height. Okay, so this suggests that the probability is not the same for each one. Now, why would that be? Well, how is the only way you can get a one? To get a median of one, you've got to have at least three ones in your, in your group. That's going to be kind of hard to do. Not many ways that can happen. To get a six for a median, you have to have at least three sixes. Again, not very easy to have happen. Looks like three or four percent. At the time, those things are going to be happening, at least in the experimental results. It's going to be a lot easier to get here a three or four for the middle, middle one, the median. Okay? 
I think I have a little more data in the spreadsheet. Let's go to that. So, so let's go back here. So when I look at these and just recorded the medians each time, <clears throat> looks like I've got 1,220 different uh, data points at this point. So even more data. And these turn out to be the pr probabilities here. Let's look, what the, look at what the bar graph looks like there. Okay, this is what the bar graph looks like there. Well, I've worked out what the what the theoretical is for medians, and this is what it looks like right here. I can I've got it on my slide here next. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. The next slide has the theoretical, and notice that uh, it's actually symmetric, and but there are higher bars in the middle and lower bars on the outside. So that's what it turns out to be there. So the, the main point here, the first point is, the distribution of sample statistics has a distribution of its own. It could have a different shape and different parameters than the corresponding uh, underlying thing, distribution of individuals. That's the, the number one first point that we want to make. Okay. What about for means? This is the one that's really interesting and very kind of important for us. Here is with 700 dice rolls, here is a distribution here. Notice like the means, it's higher in the middle and lower on the end. In fact, uh, there, this, so far, there were no means of 1 or 1.2 or 6 or 5.8. They're, they're possible. But very highly improbable. What's the uh, to get a mean of a one? All five dice would have to be ones. That's a very low probability. In fact, we know what that probability is. Let's see if we can figure it out. That's only well of the five dice rolls that there there are uh, there are five to the sixth power rolls. Right? No, I mean, sorry, excuse me. There are six to the fifth power rolls. There we go. And only one of them is all, all uh, sixes. All, all, yeah, all sixes, let's say. So if you take one divided by that answer as a decimal, that's point, that's one over 7,776. That is one point three zeros and then a one two eight. So that's that's very very low probability that would happen. So it's not surprising in only seven hundred rolls that it never happened. I think I have some more rolls on my Excel sheet. Let's see if I can look at the data there. So on the data on that, let's go back over here. Now if I look at the means. And here, by the way, the means, notice when you're dividing by 5, go up by fifths, which is 0.2. So these go up by 0.2. And here's my data here. I did get one group to roll um, five sixes, which actually they beat the, beat the odds here because that, that would be unusual to happen in, in uh, only 1,200 rolls. But this is the data there for that so far. And let's look at the, uh, the graph. This is what the graph looks like there. Okay. So there's the relative frequency there. So you, you notice a few things that are kind of interesting there about that. That, those are, that, that is different. Uh, something I don't have in my slides is what if we look at this as rolls of of samples of size 10. I, I didn't do this as many times, so I only have, a, have 60 samples here. So this uh, frequency, let's see if I've got the frequency histogram for that somewhere.
Well, I don't have it already worked out. I'm going to skip over that right now. I need a little more data there anyway. A little bit bigger sample size. Okay. So, uh, going back to our slides, that's what we have there. So, again, if we take the experiment of taking a sample of size n from some known population, compute a statistic for the sample, such as the, as the mean, median, or standard deviation, if we repeat the sample experiment, notice this is answering some of our questions from earlier. We notice that there will be some natural variation in the values of the statistics from each sample so that the, the sample statistic may not be the same as the population parameter. And if we do it from sample to sample, they may vary. But if we form a distribution where the random variable is the value of these sample statistics from the distribution, then these sample statistics have a distribution of their own. The shape of the distribution is different, usually, from the shape of the distribution of the individuals. And the distribution of both sample means and medians was more mound-shaped than the distribution of individuals was. Okay. Let's look at the individual dice rolls and compute some parameters for them. Okay. Here's the x values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The probabilities are 1, 6. Approximate percentages there. If we multiply the x times the probabilities, here it is approximately in decimal, add those up, we get 3.5, which is the mean. So the mean is 3.5 exactly. If we then take the x's minus the means and square them, we get these numbers here. Multiply those by the probabilities, we get these numbers in the last column here. Add those up, we get the variance. So the variance here is about 2. Point, what's 2.916 repeating. So how do the mean and variance of the distribution of sample means compare to the mean and variance of the distribution of individual dice rolls? Now, to exp explore this a little bit, we're going to look at a simpler example to figure out first. We're going to say, well, what if the sample size is just two? What if we roll just two dice and let x bar be the mean of the two dice rolls? See if you can work this out. List all the possible samples and compute x bar for each sample. Make a table of the PDF for x bar and graph the PDF for x bar. Then compute the mean and variance of the distribution of x bar. And then compare these values to the corresponding parameters for the distribution of individual dice rolls. I think you can actually do this. So uh, you might press pause on this screen, go and then try to work this out yourself. Do that now. Press pause. Well, we've actually done essentially done this before. Here are all the different uh, rolls. There are six possibilities for the first die and six for the second. They're independent. There are six square or 36 different possible samples of size two, and here they all are in order. Uh, a 1-1, a 1-2, a 1-3, a 2-2, a 1-4, 2-3, and so forth. I have them in order from the lowest to the highest, but if the dice are the same, there's only one way you can do that. But if they're different, there are two ways. It could be one on the first die, two on the second, two on the first, one on the second, right? And so if you add up all those possibilities, then there are 36 ways. If you have two ones, the mean and the, the mean and the median are the same all the time when you just have two dice. So then one and one here, the mean is one. One and two, the mean is 1.5. One and three, the mean is two, and so forth. And the probability here is uh, 1 over 36 for each one, except the ones that there are two ways, they'll be, that's 2 over 36, so that's 1 18th. So these are the probabilities, and of course these probabilities uh, sum to 1 there. All right, now if we put these together, all the ones that have, well, that's that's by itself there, that one's by itself, but there are a couple that are 2s, so I could add those together to get, get a mean of 2. And there's a couple that I can add together to get the mean for 2.5 and so forth. Well, if you put that together, our x values are going 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, and so forth, up to 6, our x bar values. Now, before we did this, looking, we looked at this distribution before and looked at these probabilities. Before, we looked at the distribution of just the sum of the two, and the sum went 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 12. 
This time we're just dividing all those same numbers by 2 until we get means that run from 1 to 6 going up in halves. And the probabilities are 136, 236, 336, 436, 536, 636, then back down to 536, 436, and so forth. Okay, and now we have their probabilities here. And so here we see the, the uh, frequency histogram or, or a PDF. It's really a PDF graph, right? for the probability distribution of the sample means. So we've actually worked this out before. Okay, what about the mean and standard deviation of this distribution? Well, here's the, here's the sum, here's the X bar value, here's the PDF values that we just worked out. Uh, Reduce fractions here, decimal approximations here. We multiply the X bar times the PDF here and add those up, we get the mean, and sure enough, look at that, it's 3.5. So it's centered up, uh, in fact, the mean, median, and the mode are, are 3.5 right here. It's completely symmetric. <laughs> and that's the same mean that we had before. And that's that's sort of good news because it says if we average the sample means, we get the same, we get the, the population mean of the individual pop, uh, population of individual dice. So it doesn't change center. But what about the variability? I think it's pretty clear to see that, uh, that this is less variable, more close to the center, than just bars that go straight across. So we're going to have a smaller standard deviation. And let's see, let's work that out. To find the standard deviation, we take the, let's see, once we have the mean of 3.5, we take each x bar minus the 3.5 and square it. So 1 minus 3.5 is negative 2.5 squared is 6.25 and so forth. So we do all that for every one. Take each one of those values times the probability, the PDF value here, multiply that together here to get this last column, add those up and that's the variance. Notice the variance is 1.45, the variance of x was 2.9. 1.45, 2 2.9, if you look at that the 2.9 is twice as big as the 1.45. You divide the variance of the x's by the sample size here, we got the variance of the thing here. So that's kind of interesting. All right. What if we do this now for three dice? Okay. You could do it yourself, but I've, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Here are the possibilities for three dice rolls. You either get all ones. There's only one way you can do that. Two ones and a two, if I put them in order, uh, but there are actually three different orders, three different dice you could get the two on, for example. So there's three ways of doing that. A one, one, three, there's three ways there. One, two, two, three ways there. One, one, four, three ways there. Or all dice are different. One, two, three, six ways there, and so forth. Now this table goes on. Let me show you the whole table of this. Okay, so this is for three dice. Here's the whole table right here. So I've worked out this whole table, and if you add up all these possibilities, the number of ways for each one, add them up, there are 216 ways. Is that correct? Did I get them all? Well, it should be, it should be six ways for the first, six for the second, six for the third. You multiply those together, that should be six to the power of three. Yep, 216, that is correct so that I got, got all of them. Then for each of these three possibilities, I did the medians and the means, and then collected those in a table, okay? I uh, actually did it for the, I could do it for the means, I did it for the, for the mean, I could do it for the medians, but I did it for the means here. Worked out what the means are, they go up by thirds, uh, and so X bar, bar could be one, one and a third, one and two thirds, two, and so forth. And so there they are rounded off, the probabilities exactly in fractions. And then multiply these together, x bar times the probability, add those up. Again, you get a mean of 3.5. And again, we actually get a symmetric distribution here in this particular case. And notice that the standard deviation is actually even lower here than before. If we take the x bar uh, if you take the x bar minus the mean and square it, we get these numbers here. Multiply each one of these numbers by the corresponding probability here, we get the corresponding number here. 
Do that for each one of those. We get all of these numbers here. Add them up, we get this number here, which is the variance. And if you look, it's even smaller than we had for, for 2. It turns out to be, if you multiply that by 3, we get the variance of the x. Okay, let's do it for 4. Here are the possibilities for 4. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 3. I worked them all out, did the number of different ways you could do that. Uh, the, pro the, probabil the total number, uh, make sure you get this, is 6 to the 4th. So I had to make sure I got them all. And uh, I did it in a sort of systematic way, so I was sure I got them all. There are 1,296 different possibilities, which I got here. Took me a little while to work this out. And I used it in a spreadsheet here. But then for each of these possible roles, I found the mean. And then by looking at the number of ways, 1 over 1296, there's the probability. Then I grouped all the ones that were, you know, 1s for this, the 1.25s together, the 1.5s together. Here are three, not three situations where I had 1.75. I had to add these three probabilities to get the probability here for 1.75 and so forth. So it took me a little while to do this, but I worked it all out. And here's the X bar and the probability. If I multiply that together, okay, well, first of all, if I just graph this, these X's and these probabilities, I get this graph here. So there's the, the theoretical results for rolling four dice. And again, I found the, the mean by doing X bar times the probability, add them up, no surprise, look at that, it's three and a half again. And if I take the X bar, um, uh, X bar minus the mean of the X bars, I get these, and square them, I get these numbers here, multiply them by these probabilities here, and I get these numbers here, add them up there, and I get the variance, which is right there, and we get that. Same thing, theoretically worked it out for five dice. Here are the, all the possibility. I get two, uh, I get six to the fifth ways, uh, which is actually 7,776 different possibilities. I worked out all of them here and found the, actually this one I found the mean, median, and the variance. And somewhere down here I have worked out the, uh, here's the distribution for the sample variances. And somewhere I've worked out, well, actually it's on this, on this sheet over here, the theoretical distribution of mean, medians from that spreadsheet and the, and the uh, distribution of, the, uh, of this here. And then work that out. And I worked out the parameters up here for the, uh, here's this, this, the details working out the variance and the mean. Okay, so let's go back to our slideshow. So if you work this out, let's summarize. So here's the distribution for th three dice rolls. Here's the PDF table and graph. Here's the computing, here's the details of computing the mean and variance. Here's for four dice. This is the first part of the table that I showed you in, in Excel. Here's the PDF and then the graph of it, the table and the graph. Here it is for working out the, the variance in the mean for four rows and five rows. This is the theoretical worked out here on the distribution of this is the PDF for the, the X bars in the table and graph. Here's comparing our experimental data to the to this. This is with 700 rows. And notice it's it's pretty close to that. It's, it's not right on, but it's close. Uh, the, the, the one that has uh, more rolls in the spreadsheets even better and then this is working out the mean and the variance there so here's a summary here's the mean every time was 3.5 whether it was individuals or samples of size 2 3 4 or 5 okay so we see that the the mean of sample means is the same as the mean of individuals that's no not changing center and then the variance here is going down as I get more and more rolls. If I take that variance and multiply it by the sample size, though, that seems to be staying the same. Now we can actually prove that this is true if we consider uh, what we know about expected values. Suppose we take 
n copies of a random variable that all have the same mean. So the expected value of each of these x sub k's is we're going to call it just expected value of x, or that's the mu of the x's, or just mu. Okay, and x bar is take the x1 plus x2 all the way up to xn, their values, and add them up and divide by n. Well, so what's the mean of the x bars? Well, it's the expected value of x bar. So that's the expected value of this expression right here. Now, we know some pro um, properties of expected value we've looked at before. We can take the 1 over n and bring it out front, and we have the expected value of the sum here. The, sum of the expected value of the sum is the sum of the expected values, but each one of these is the same expected value of just x. Okay, and then we have n of them. Well, n things added, the n of the same things added together is just n times that, which cancels with the 1 over n. So that's the expected value of x, which is the mu of the x's. So the mu of the x bar is the mu of the x's. That's a proof of it. It does work every time, not just with dice rolls. What about the standard deviation? Can we show that this formula works in general? Now, we can. We're going to let mu be the mu of the x bars, which is mu of the x's. That's the expected value of x sub k, or the expected value of x. All that we're just going to call the same thing. We're just going to call it mu. Again, here's x bar. So the variance of the x bars, I'm going to write this way, variance of x bars is this. So it's a variance like this. We have some properties of variances. We know that a constant times a variance can be brought out front of the variance here, but it comes out as a square. That's one of our basic properties about variances. Now, if these are indivi uh, individuals' uh, distributions are independent, and we're going to make that assumption, then the variance of the sum is the sum of the variances. And each one of these variances is the same because we're just doing the same uh, experiment over and over again in our sample. So each one of these is the same. Again, that's n times the variance. That cancels one of these n. So that's 1 over n times the variance. So that says the variance of the x bars is the variance of the x's divided by n. So let's take the square root. The standard deviation of the x bars is the standard deviation of x divided by the square root of n. So that's not a, a coincidence that those that that uh, that we got that relationship. That happens every time. Sometimes this standard deviation of the x bars is called the standard error of the mean. Different name for it. So Bottom line, what's the, what's the result that we need to know? The first and most important thing is that the distribution of individual uh, samples, sample statistics like a sample mean, has its own distribution. It's different than the distribution of individuals. The mean of the sample means is the same as the mean of the distribution of individuals items, so that means there's no change in center. That seems reasonable. Samples are less variable, however, than individuals, than the individual population. So the variance of the sample mean is the variance of the individuals divided by the size of the sample. So increased sample size yields decreased standard deviation. Standard deviation of the distribution of sample means is known as the standard error of the mean. So we have these formulas. The variance of the x bars is the variance of the x's divided by n, or more, more often, we'll just be dealing with the standard deviation. So the standard deviation of the x bars is the standard deviation of the x's divided by square root of n. Here are side by side the the dis, the uh, frequency distributions, the PDFs, the uh, theoretical distributions here for the probabilities, the probability distributions for individual dice rolls here. The distribution of sample means when you're rolling two. The distribution of sample means when you're rolling 3, 4, and 5. What do you notice about these? Well, you notice that they're getting more and more mound shaped. In fact, what does it look more like? More and more like they're getting close to? Well, if you said a bell shaped curve or a normal curve, you are correct. Here is a website that you can go to, and it pulls up um, even more dice rolls. Here are five. Uh, now, they actually have the sum down here rather than the mean, but the shape is what we're looking at. Here's 6, 7, 8, 10, 12, let's get over a little bit more faster, 18, 
24, 37, 50. This is going to look pretty much solid. What does that look like? Boy, that looks like a normal distribution to me, doesn't it? Okay, and this is this is no uh, no um, coincidence. This is called the central limit theorem. The distribution of sample means from any underlying distribution of individual items approaches a normal distribution as the sample size gets larger. The mean of this distribution of sample means is the same as the mean of the individuals. Mu of x bar is mu of x. The variance of sample means is the variance of the individuals divided by the size of the sample. Variance of x bar is the variance of x divided by n. And if the distribution of individuals is exactly normal, then the distribution of sample means is exactly normal regardless of sample size. If the distribution of individuals is highly non-normal, then the sample size may need to be over 30 to be approximated well by a normal distribution. If it's closer to normal to begin with, then, you, then you're going to get an approximately normal with far less than 30. So hopefully this gave us some introduction to uh, uh, sampling distributions.